Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new, please hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn on your notification bell so you can get notified whenever a new video is released on this channel. If you want to check out more hood tours, look through my page. I have over 300 plus tours covering all different neighborhoods in Philadelphia, PA. Right now, we are on the 600 block of 9th Street. We're going to be doing a little walking tour today of the Hunting Park neighborhood, which is known as the second worst neighborhood in Philadelphia, PA based on 2020 police data. The way they compile this list is they use the police department facts when we're talking about gun violence, killings, robberies, theft, etc., etc. And they use that data and those statistics to, you know, order these neighborhoods. So when the number two worst neighborhood, Hunting Park is a mixed cultural background neighborhood as far as like it's Spanish, Latin, you can say Puerto Ricans, probably a different other couple um, types of Spanish people in this neighborhood. And then you got the African Americans that, you know, live side by side with the Spanish people, you know, end up becoming family. They live together, you know, side by side without any problems. There's no issues. As you can see, it's a little residential block, 3,600 block. We got porch homes. We have the corner store right there called the Valera or Val Valera Food Market. On well, Ninth and Erie. Now, I can keep on going straight. I'll probably keep going straight and then I'll zigzag. I'm gonna do my best to zigzag. I'll probably take it up to like Cayuga, maybe. We're crossing Erie Avenue. We're on the 900 block of West Erie Avenue. We got Scotty's Vintage Unisex Salon on my left hand side. We're next to the four bus stop. We got uh, Pete's tires across the street, new and used tires. You can get like rims there too. I think they got rims also. We got a water ice spot on my left hand side. Got a couple of gentlemen out here sweeping up, making an attempt to clean up. You know, some people do actually care about their neighborhood, but sometimes even if you clean or you sweep in a couple days, there'll be debris that blows from right up the block. Cause look at, I just passed three or four houses or so that were well swept, right? Then look a couple houses down the block. Trash and debris. So it's like, you can clean in the front of your house all you want if the rest of the neighborhood doesn't get together and clean, you know what I mean? Now, when I was young, I remember back in the day, I'm talking about 90s. We're talking about the 90s here. 96, 97, 98, 99, even like 2000, 2001, 2002. We would have like um, block cleaning days, which would usually be Saturday, when they would close the block from like 8 in the morning to like 12 noon. And they would, everybody would come outside with bags, with brooms, and we would clean the blocks. I remember because I participated in a couple dozen of them growing up as a kid. The old folks would come out, the young folks would come out, everybody would come out, clean up the block. Nowadays, I don't see that as often. I'm not saying no block probably doesn't do that anymore, but I don't see it as often as I used to when I was a youngster. It varies from neighborhood to neighborhood. It also depends on the block captain. Cause you know, every block, usually a lot of the time gets appointed a block captain. We're on Ninth and Butler. Every block gets appointed a block captain and the block captain's job is actually to set up those dates. And sometimes you got to apply for like a permit to close the block. You apply for like a city permit and you get permission to actually close up the block. And then every, and they, sometimes they even give you like bags. They give you like, um, like recycling bins they give you all that so that you'll be able to do it and you ain't got to come up out of the pocket because i remember my block back when i was a young boy we would have our own 
black captain who she would provide us with a good bit of stuff. You know what I mean? She even had her own, you know, couple brooms. Her name was Julia. That was her her name. But then they tried to like bounce it around a couple other pe people. But yeah, you can apply to be the black captain. <laughs> you can put petition see if everybody on the block wants you to be the black captain. But the thing is, sometimes that comes with a lot of responsibility being the black captain. They asked my pop before to be the black captain. He was like, nah, dog. <laughs> I mean, he, he didn't say no, nah, dog, but he was like, no, thank you. Because he, he didn't want to be the black captain. And I don't blame him because you end up getting, like, bothered about a lot of stuff. Like, even, like, the pump. Like, when they would want you to open up, like, the fire hydrant or the pump, they would knock on your door and say, excuse me, can you open up the pump? Because you're the black captain. So you ain't got no choice but to open up the pump or tell them no and then... You know what I mean? They would also close the blocks for like lunches too. They would give away lunches like in the summer. They can apply for like the lunch program. And they would give those lunches to like children. Like, you know, some neighborhoods had a lot of kids. I know my block had a lot of kids. So the block captain would go from house to house. We're on Pike, Ninth and Pike. The black captain would go from house to house and they would ask him, would you like to sign up for, you know, the lunch program, especially if you had kids? So you would sign the petition and if, you know, enough people signed up, they would get approved and a lunch truck would come every day and give your black, you know, a couple cases of food, like little school lunches, kind of like freebies. Remember the freebies? The school lunches came with like applesauce, milk. You know, sandwiches, peanut butter, jelly. Well, the, the, the school lunch type of food, they would bring that in like a, a city. like a, I think it was like a school district of Philadelphia, box truck. And they would come and they would deliver them to the black captain. And it was the black captain's responsibility to give out lunches. To do, it was a lot. It was like a whole job, but for, for free. <laughs> you didn't get paid to actually do it. It was doing it out of the kindness of your heart so that's why sometimes when people say why don't they clean or why do the people live like this it's not on purpose it's like you know you you it's when you're living in such a tight knit area with row homes you know you got probably 22 on the left you got 22 probably on like the right it's kind of hard to be responsible for each and every single person some people are more hermit you know some people like are like a recluse they prefer to be by themselves. Some people are more, you know, outgoing. They sit outside every day. They drink beers. Some people just go to work and come back home and go straight in into their house. You know what I mean? So it's it's hard to co to coordinate it effectively. All right, we got La Primas Mini Market on my left. We got La Coming Dominican Salon on my right. So we're right here approaching Lycoming, but Lycoming also turns from Luzerne. That's Luzerne over there, Luzerne Street. And we're hitting Lycoming right here on my left, and we're gonna hit Hunting Park. Now, we're in the Hunting Park neighborhood, but there's also a park called Hunting Park. If you come to this park in the summer, it'd be packed. It'd be packed with a lot of people. Um, I already see motorcycles in there, I see cars. Like once the weather gets beautiful, they ain't got road rage. She was, she was beeping because she didn't want to let him walk. It's messed up. But what's up, doggy? <laughs> See the little doggy? We got First German Baptist Church across the street. But yeah, so this park right here is like a recreational park where a lot of people come. Especially once the weather warms up on Saturday and Sunday. It's like a little mecca, like a gala out here, like a party. Like, like some, some California knows how to party. California, yeah, yo, oh, remember the Sacconis, yo, whoever remember these Sacconis, remember the Sacconis, I used to rock them Johns, I used to have Sacconis back in the day, I haven't had a pair in a really, really, really long time, but I used to wear Sacconis, but, um, and Diodorus, Diodorus was the, the, the shoe, yeah, so anyway, in the summer, this spot be popping, 
like even in spring like you come here in spring, even in like the winter you come on like a 40 like if we get hit with with 10 20 single digits numbers every single day for you know several or so weeks and then we get 145 55 degree day like today you go to the park when everybody gets out of work you'll see all the systems out the cars the motorcycles people sitting down with, with, with hookahs people with beer pe people selling all types of stuff yeah this is the spot where it happened at and they got a tennis court they got a football field they got a baseball field they got some usha regulated united states handball association regulated walls to play blue ball handball big blue you can play handball here you know hitting the ball against the wall with your hand or you can use that same wall for like racquetball like playing racquetball um there's like a gazebo where they hold like you know wedding parties and all types of stuff we got the four bus the 53 bus and the 400 bus right here you see in the section where you can sit there and catch the bus in case you want to you know utilize that there's usually public transportation located on all the main roads let me show you guys these little houses over here colorful houses right two-story row homes right across the street from hunting park so if you purchase one of those houses right across the street you got tennis courts swing sets jungle gyms there's basketball courts it's a gimbal it's like 80 bucks Yeah, it'll hold sturdy and you can edit that journal on Final Cut and all of that. All right, yo. It's called a gimbal and you can get it on like Amazon. No, but I mean, maybe from their website, you could probably have them ship it to, to the store and pick it up. Amazon had it on sale for like 80 bucks. All right, yo. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, yo, do you think he said, what is that? Is that a selfie stick or does it keep the camera smooth? I said, it keeps the camera smooth. Said, How much? It's total about 80 bucks. It was on sale. He said, do you think that I'll be able to use that on an iPhone 12 to shoot like music videos? I said, yeah, you shoot it and then you put the footage in Final Cut or Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas or Avid, like whatever. You know, you can use iMovie, like, you know, it depends. It doesn't really matter as long as it gives you the basic linear editing where you can chop and lay it on the timeline and you can put the audio track you can have separate tracks yeah you can do it so he's like thanks gang he was, but he was like yo so i can't get it from walmart or not? i said nah bro you gotta order from amazon i mean i don't know if like you can probably get one from like walmart.com and have them ship it to the store and maybe you can pick it up you know store pickup but it, you know i think his best bet is amazon and, this, and the sale fluctuates. And there's different brands, too. This brand right here was the one that I got for 80 bucks. I also got a DJI 3-axis full-size gimbal, a Ronin, for my bigger cameras with lenses and all that. But this is for my, you know, for my touring videos. So I figured that I invested in it because it comes in handy. All right, we're at 9th and Hunting Park. We got... Eduardo, is that Eduardo or Edward? I'm sorry, that's Edward Barbershop. We got Old English style pizza on my right hand side. Lucky beer distributor, golden um, diner, Chinese takeout, a dentist. We got several other businesses up and down the avenue. That's Hunting Park Street, right? Hunting Park Street drives right through Hunting Park. So literally, it's called Fairmount Drive Park. You see right there on that sign, it says Fairmount Drive Park. However, if you come over here and if you read this sign right here, it says, welcome to Hunting Park. Yeah, football field. There's a swimming pool and everything there. So, you know, if you're ever in Philadelphia and you're into the urban life and you like to just hang out and you don't mind the music or if you got a nice car and you want to pull through the city, you gotta stop by Hunting Park. You know, that's a good spot where, it's kind of like a runway show. I'm, I'm across the street here, so we don't, you know, continue to see park. Go ahead, go ahead, buddy. You're more than welcome to go. Vehicles have the right of way, because I went on. Oh no, I was actually 
perfect. I was actually on the green. It was his red because he had to stop at the red light, but I was being safe. Um, it's kind of like a runway show almost. That's how I could describe it, you know? Because some people keep circling Huntington Park with their cars and keep showing it off. Yeah, and then, you know, the bike life culture comes here. A lot of the time, like if you look at one of my oldest videos, one of my bike life videos that has like over, I think like 600,000 plus views, many years ago, many, many moons ago, um, this is where it took place. Well, some of it took place. And yeah, this is where we linked up at. And nowadays, a lot of the ride outs also meet here too. Since it's daytime, people still at work. And what's today? Today is Wednesday. So it's not gonna be as you know popping as it normally is. But I'm telling you, the it's two baseball fields here, and both of them be packed with players, teams be playing baseball. It'd be like like little league football. There'd be there's also a track too. So if you're in the jogging or you want some like there's a there's a legit track in there um, that you can actually jog it or you can actually walk it so if that's your thing you like staying fit you know and then it's free free to the public you can walk through it and all that on my left hand side you got like this little gazebo this is the gazebo that i was talking about i shot a music video inside there too before right here at that gazebo that's in the center of the park and also at that basketball court it's a basketball court all over there um, let's take it up one more block yeah, because we could turn down here, which is also like hood blocks, but I'm going to do like my best to like zigzag. We got El Greco pizza, El Greco pizzeria. Let me hear the music. Yeah. I'm going to try to like zigzag. Like if I was in the car, I'm going to just go up and down the blocks and just try to like narrate a little bit of what I see and the ambience and everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, gotta wash, like, the salt off the vehicles. I know, right now, with 50 degrees, it make me just want to just stop recording and go and go wash my whip, you know what I mean? <laughs> Bunch of salty and dirty and got mud in the tires, because in Philly, they're doing a lot of construction and they're breaking up the streets, and then they fill it with mud. So then you end up just walking over i mean walking <laughs> i said walking because i was tilting down you end up driving over mud and then you get the mud stuck in your tires i'll be hating that like when i put fresh arm on my tires and then i drive over like a muddy muddy uh pothole oh man then it gets stuck right in all the arm on everything yeah we right here on cayuga coming up i forgot to show you guys cayuga they got the parks over there. Jeez. Hello. Yeah, so we're approaching Cayuga, 9th and Cayuga. I said hello because she said cheese. So, hey, I should have said turkey. <laughs> I should have said pickles. Should have said something. Badlands, Philadelphia. It's a top shop. They sell like sweaters and all that stuff there. It's called Badlands Philadelphia. We're gonna make this right on 800 Cayuga. And a motorcycle across the street. Now I can make a, I have two choices. I can like cut down the little blocks. Oh, I can cut down the big blocks. Should I do the little blocks? Because we got major blocks too, like 8th Street. Not major, but average size blocks. You know, 8th Street is like a full size block. Residential block. This block right here. What's this, Darien? Oh, I don't even... I gotta make sure I'm legit. I gotta wait till I get to the corner to make sure this, this is Darien. But there's like little blocks like this. They're really tiny. Some of them are residential. Like the next block that we get to is going to be residential. But as you can see, this block right here has garages and everything. It's tiny. This isn't like one of the main um, streets. Like 8th Street is a main street. Like in between every other street is a main street. So for example, like this, like it'll be like a little block. It'll be like Percy. It's a little block. 9th Street is like a main street. 
Then you got like Darien will be like a little block. Then you got like Eighth Street will be like a like a main street. Then you got like whatever's in between that. Um, whether it's Marshall, whether it's Fairhill, whatever it is, you know what I mean? And then it'll go back to like a number, which will be like the main block. That's traveling north and south. But if you travel west to east, then you'll have something similar, but with the avenues, like Erie Avenue, Hunting Park Avenue. Let me get out the way because there's a vehicle behind me. Um, Gerard Avenue, Snyder Avenue, Washington Avenue, Lehigh Avenue, um, Wyoming, you know, stuff like that. And then you have like all the little blocks in between. Like, you know, after Susquehanna, you know, you'll have like a, like a Norris or like a Diamond Street. Then you have like a Cecil B. Moore Avenue and so on. Got this youngster riding the little scoop scoop behind me. Yeah, we were on Darien. Got a busted window over there. Uh, we're exiting the 4300 block at Darien. We're entering the 4200 block. Yeah, at this time of day, there's people out, but you know, the majority of people are at work. So sometimes people say, when they watch my videos, they'll say, Tune, where is everyone? It's a ghost town. You know, or or like, why well, I see so many cars? Well, you know, a good amount of people work. Um, if not, some people just like to stay indoors. You know, like I said, some people prefer to be inside. Watching TV, watching their soap operas, cooking, eating, playing video games. In the summer, 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 in the hot, hot summer, you'll end up seeing people come outside. And the ones that want to come outside, because even in the hot, hot summer, there'll still be plenty of people that will stay inside because they got air conditioner. <laughs> so, you know, you got air conditioner, it's like, why come outside? I hear the kids out. The kids are running around playing, though. Yeah, I hear them playing. I just don't want to point the camera at them because the children, I mean. But I walked through like at least in every block, there was like somebody working on the car. There was somebody else working on on the car on my right hand side. Yeah, a lot of the time, like when there's people like working on cars and stuff, I try not to point the camera directly at them for the reason being, I don't want them to think that I'm like some LNI. Believe it or not, a lot of people ask me, do I work for the city? Am I a reporter? Um, do I work for like the news or something like that? Like, really? Look at me. Do I look like I work for the news? <laughs> but the gadgets that I be carrying around look a little bit like high end almost. So they get curious and they ask me and I don't blame them. I'm, I'm usually pretty friendly on, on the response back. Like, nah, I'm just, you know, I'm on YouTube. You trying to be on YouTube? You want to shout anybody out? Because you can shout someone out. Oh, we got a dirt bike right here. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Pop it up, pop it up, pop. Oh, he was about to try to pop a wheelie for me, but there ain't enough space, so I don't blame him. I was about to get on the Papa Willie because I always ask him every time I see somebody that's on a bike, I say, bring it up, pop, pop it up, pop, pop it up. Papa Willie, we on Hunting Park. Shout out to the One Way Twins, Edwin and Nell, the twins. I shot a video for them or about them. It's on my page. Um, it's called the One Way Twins. You got both of them. They both ride bicycles. They're both really nice. They ride like SE bikes. But most recently, to my knowledge, um, Edwin just started riding like dirt bikes. So if you look at that video, you'll see how nice these two kids are. The twins are on on pedal bikes. You can only imagine what the type of damage that they're going to do when they get on dirt bikes or street bikes or supermotos. You know what I mean? Eventually when they, you know, start riding. But but Edwin st still ride dirt bikes to this day now. Cause you know they're older. When I when I worked with them on that little short, it was like a little eleven minute video. I shot in this neighborhood. I shot it here at Hunting Park. Shot it here. Go check it out. It's on my page. I think it's Bike Life One Way Twins. I think that's what it's called. Bike Life One One Way Twins. Something like that. Just look on my page. Go to my videos and filter the videos to the most popular, and then work your way down, and then you'll see it. I don't think it got that many views. Probably got like a couple thousand views, but. It's a nice video, like as, as far as like the way it's shot, color corrected it, color graded it. I used the DJI gimbal. I used 
you know, I think I used the drone, edited it up for him, used different lenses. Looks nice. It wasn't shot on a cell phone. This, this is different. You know, when I do the tours, I don't do no editing. I don't do no color correction, no color grading. I don't do no nothing. I keep it raw and real. Oh, snap. Check out this little needle right here. You don't see that often in this area. But since it's in the street, that tells me somebody could have been shooting up while driving by. And then they just threw it in the street just to dispose of it. Range Rover. Range Rover in the hood. It's a used Range Rover. It's not like it's a brand new Range Rover, you know what I mean? And even if it was a brand new one, then still, you got good credit. You can walk out the dealer with a Range Rover. Good credit and enough capital down, enough cash down, and they'll give you the keys. Just know that you ain't gonna get that, that title until you pay it off, so. Uh, we got, what's that, Jerez? I would say it's Perez, but the P looks backwards. I don't know if they did that on purpose, grocery store. Yeah, I just realized that like, we just spent a half an hour walking from Erie to Cayuga, and now we're down one block, and we didn't even get through all the blocks of Hunting Park. So it's probably better off if I zigzag rather than trying to stay on like a steady path. Because to be completely honest with you, some blocks are going to be more chill and quiet than others. And I'm trying to take you all through, you know, the blocks with some type of people hanging out. But a lot of people be telling me, like, why don't you do, why don't you drive slower in those tours? Or some people even say, like, why don't you walk through the neighborhood? I say, because sometimes I feel like I'm able to cover a lot more on foot than I'm able, I mean, driving, than I'm able to do it on foot. Because when I'm on foot, I just spend 30 minutes walking through about, you know, a dozen or so blocks and another 30 minutes and I'll probably walk through another two blocks going up and down and that's it. When I drive, I can stay at a steady pace and capture a whole lot more within the time slot allotted. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. For example, in a vehicle, they would like me to drive a lot slower when I do the tours in a vehicle. But the problem with that is if I drive slower, I'm not gonna be able to cover as much ground. And I'm trying to cover as much of the neighborhood. Cause then if I don't cover the whole neighborhood, oh, he over there, Willie, and I see you in the little, what's that, a CRF 50? Okay, okay, give me some, give me some. Oh, young boy, Willie, and oh, young boy, out here. He out here, he out here by himself. And he's still Willie in it. We all in Luzerne. Don't go nowhere, young boy. Now I feel like, Oh, there you go, there you go. My mother telling him, Willie something, Willie something, bro, Willie something. Give me, give me some, some sauce, bro. All right, well, we was gonna make a left on Luzerne, but we just gonna take it one block up to see if this homie want to pop a little Willie for us. Hold your four stroke, bro, hold, hold your four stroke, slow down, he, he about to be out. Let me see something. Uh-oh, okay, okay. Get his little Willie on. Popping it up. That's how they start them. They start them young. They usually, you know, try to get them the bikes early, like the PW50s, the, the CRF50, just so that they can start young. And then by the time they get to their teens and to their adult years, they're already comfortable. They got the locomotive skills. All right. So I'm probably just going to turn on the next block because... I feel like these little teeny blocks don't have as much activity as, as the other blocks would. I mean, there's a couple people out. But like I said, it all varies. You know, one thing is, not anymore. Maybe it was like that in the 70s. But not anymore do people in like, in, in, in 2021, when it be hot and the weather come out nice, you don't see every single body come outside. It's only like, you know, the, the ones who like to socialize. Because some people are antisocial. And I don't blame them. Some people <laughs> don't want to talk to their neighbor, you know? So, oh, we got a little memorial here. So, we ended up coming through here. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Let me, let me see something. Let me see something. Willie, 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 Willie. Uh huh. Got him, got him, got him. Hyped him up. There, 
There you go, bro, bro. Okay, got your feet on the ground. I see you. Yeah, it looks like there's a little memorial here. Rest in peace, Pinky. Justice, wow, for a nanny. That's a shame, so it must have been a female. Because her name was Pinky, and then it said Justice for Nani, which means that, you know, Nani is like a Spanish female name. All right, so we're going to make this left-hand turn. We're just going to cut because I feel like <laughs> them little back blocks, they're cool and all, but at this time, you know, not a lot of people out. And I can't wait till the daylight savings change because what's going to happen is it's going to get darker later, right? When it get darker later... You're gonna have more people out later. So it's gonna give people a time. It's gonna give people an opportunity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna give people an opportunity. Hello. We just passed 8th Street. She said hi to me, so I said hi back. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's what you gotta do. Just say hi to people. But um, in the summer, it gives me a better opportunity to you know, at like a, like a five o'clock, six o'clock period, it'll still be daylight out and you have everybody come out of work. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I prefer to like try to do all my stuff like throughout the day so that I can enjoy some of the afternoon too, rather than, you know, coming out in the evening when everything is in, you know, the the best weather to, to enjoy. Because I don't know about y'all, but I'm trying to enjoy the weather too. So it's going to be hard for me on like some of these tours where I want to get like a lot of, you know, the ambience, but I also want to be out there too. I want to ride, I want to be out on the supermoto, or I want to be in my car listening to music, listening to the system and all that. So that's why I'll probably try to mix it up. Some days if I'm on my supermoto, I'll rock the camera on my chest and I'll take y'all like on a little, um, you know, supermoto tour. If I'm on a scooter, I'll take y'all on like a scooter tour. I'm going to make this left on 7th and Pike. Just gonna make this left. We're gonna go up pike. Yeah, so, or if I'm in my car, my little Civic, you know, with the system, with the banger, with the 13 plus, you know what I mean? Sound things, think thingy my jiggies, <laughs> with the music in it, then I'll do the same. I might put the camera on the roof up top and just so I can still give y'all some of that content. But that's the problem. People be like, yo, tune. But, you know, why you go out at 3, three o'clock or, or 4 o'clock? Why don't you go out late? Because I'm trying to do things myself when it get late. <laughs> I don't know if that make any sense. Like, but don't get it twisted. When the daylight savings, the clock thing changes, I think it's next month. Or is it this month? I think it's this month in March. I think it is in March. I think the daylight savings, I think it's like on the 21st of March or something. I don't know. Y'all can help me with that. But when that clock change... And it start getting dark at 8, at 9 o'clock. That gives me an opportunity to, A, capture some pretty good content with some ambience, like around 6, 6.30, 7. You know what I mean? I can go capture an hour or two of some, some content or whatever. And then I can still go back to the lab and go, you know, pick up a, something that I want to do and go chill and go ride and go have some fun while the light is still out. And maybe since it'll be warmer at night in the summer, I could do some night tours too. Just walking around like and showing y'all like the nightlife. But y'all gotta understand that this is my neighborhood. So I wanna enjoy the ambience too. People be thinking that I come from like the suburbs. I may sound like I articulate myself like I'm not from Philly. They'll be like, yo, Toon, you're not from Philly, right? Toon, what's your nationality? Toon, where, you know, where are you really from? No, I'm from North Philly. I just, you know, I guess you could say I paid attention in school. So we back on Luzerne. We're on the 700 block of Luzerne. We got the shady side right here, which has some people. Shady as in, you know, the sun is causing shade. But then we got the sunny side across the street, which might not have that many people. I feel like I've been walking y'all through the shady side. Should I walk y'all through the sunny side? I'm going to walk y'all through the shady side just so that, you know, you can see the little ambience. Hey, we right here in the middle of the street. Red light, red light, red light. And then I'm going to just cross on the next block so y'all can see some sun. I'm going to try to mix it up. Mix it up like like the best way I can so that y'all can get a little bit of everything, man. It's hard. It's hard to please everyone, but I'm trying to focus on like pleasing like the like the 99%, like the majority. And I got to please the majority, the main supporters, the ones who actually, 
you know, there's a lot of people that leave positive feedback, you know, thoughtful, kind, genuine comments. And there's the 1% that doesn't feel the same. So I'm not really worried about the 1% that doesn't feel the same. I'm more or less worried about the people who actually support and show love and, you know what I mean? The people who are positive. So mix it up for it, for y'all. Yeah, these are a lot of the routes where I would come through with my Civic, like in the summer. House for sale right here on my left hand side, 4038. I used to drive ice cream trucks in this neighborhood too. This neighborhood was perfect for ice cream trucks. When I would try to um, make some money, I used to drive an ice cream truck. They would pay you 25% of what you made for the day. So I think I talked to you guys about this briefly before, but let's say your ice cream truck pulled in 500 for the day. You will make a buck 25 by the end of the day. I know it's not a lot to some people. Some people make 125 an hour, but I was 16 years old, 15, 16, you know? <laughs> so it was like really helpful being a 15, 16 year old, being able to make that type of income. So, and it was cash too. So I was working for Arabs when, you know, they owned the ice cream trucks. We're at seven for like homing. Yo, she was into the music. She like gave me like the whole, she gave me like the face with it. Like, I think she was listening to some Cardi B. I'm across the street now just cause I promise y'all light on the next block, you know, but yeah, should I just walk straight? I'm gonna walk straight, get a little bit of, you know, the cross block ambience action. It looks like there's people out here chilling. <sighs> but yeah, she was listening to like some Cardi B and she was into it. <laughs> Cardi B be having women feeling themselves. I swear when she pulled up, she was real calm and nonchalant. And then she seen me and she heard the music and everything. And she was like, rah, rah, rah. Like, she wasn't like, rah, 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 but she was like her head and everything was like going with the song. So I'm like, yo, she was feeling herself. Ficka, 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 feeling herself. I right, walking down like homing. Passing Marshall, remember? If you ain't get a chance to go check out my 360 tour, actually, you y'all ain't even get a chance to check it out yet because y'all gonna see this before the 360. The 360 drops on Saturday. I try to do my best to like drop 360 tours on Saturday and then throughout the week, mon Monday through Sunday, skipping, skipping Saturday. I hold on, let me wait because. The screw gun. I'm gonna be talking all over the screw gun. It's like I was saying, I dropped the 360 tours on Saturdays. Lately, that's what I've been doing. I don't know if it's gonna change up in the summer, but I dropped the 360 tours on Saturdays. And then Monday through Saturday and Sunday, I drop like these regular tours, whether they're walking or driving tours. And then eventually I'll end up getting back to to my, you know, traveling out to different like towns. You remember how I went to like Lidditch, PA? How I went to like, you know, New Hope, how I went to, to Jim Thorpe. I'm going to continue doing that also outside of Pennsylvania. But I'm just waiting for this weather to break because this weather hasn't been working with me. It's been working against me. And I'm sure it's been working against a lot of y'all. We've been dealing with some treacherous weather lately. I don't want to go to these towns and it's freezing 30, 30 degrees and then it's windy. And when I try to record audio, all you hear is wind. I did that. <laughs> and it sucks. So once the weather breaks and we get like nice stale air, meaning still air, air that's not moving, um, y'all can hear me. And it could be a much more enjoyable experience. We got a little playground right here. Yeah, orange, blue, nice little playground spot. This school right here was made in 1915. 1915, it's an old building. A lot of the old buildings, they ended up like painting these little murals on them just to brighten them up. They don't have central air or none of that though. At least, I don't think this one has. I know mine's, mine's did it. My older buildings didn't have it. It was in hot buildings. Boy, it was we in hot buildings. 
All right, now we're approaching Hunting Park once again. So all these little blocks share the Avenue Hunting Park. Yeah, they got like the mosaic art. Check it out. Mosaic art. Yeah. We got the 53 bus out next to us. We got an auto zone on my left. Got people sitting on the porch across the street, hanging out, getting some sun. They lucky because they on the sunny side. These people on this side, <laughs> they on the shady side. And I'm layered up and I'm walking. So I got enough body heat like in the mix. But if you're not walking and you're not layered up, you probably come out here. It probably still feel cold to some pe people, you know. But good thing is, is that I got a pretty good tolerance for the cold weather. I know a lot of people that don't really have tolerance for the cold weather. Some people hate the cold weather. I have like a love-hate thing with it because growing up, I loved it. I can't sleep in the heat. My nostrils get stuffy. I toss, I turn. It's hard for me to sleep in hot weather. I get sweaty. I sweat real easy in the summer. But in the cold, I fall asleep. I sleep like a baby. However... It will be kind of in the way sometimes with like a lot of the tasks and the duties that I'm trying to do throughout the daytime. They be in the way. So, you know, that's where the love hate thing comes into play. Cause I like being in the cold or I, or I like, you know, cool weather, breathable weather. I think the most I can do is like 85, 90, maybe 90 is pushing it. At least if the air is not humid, once it gets to humidity, I'm done. I get so frustrated in the humidity. <laughs> so watch. In the summer when I'm doing these tours, and I walked up to Hunting Park. I didn't park nowhere. Y'all, I didn't park nowhere. I walked here. It's not like I'm going to walk back to my vehicle and I can drive back to my residence. No, I walked up here. So, yeah, you'll see in the summer. In the summer, I'm going to be sweating. I'm going to be complaining. I'm like, yo, it's hot. We're on 6 in Bristol. I'm going to be walking. I'm going to make this right because I can go up. I'm gonna take out a fifth street. I'm gonna take out the, like around fifth and the boulevard. Fifth and the bully. Well, like right before fifth and the bully, I like cut off and I just go down some different blocks. Got a little car system out here. Okay, okay. He got a bunch of BRs. He got a bunch of BR speakers. BR is an 8 ohm voice speaker. It's a loudspeaker. It's not It's not me calling it a loudspeaker. That's the type of speaker it is. You know, you got coaxial, you got subwoofer, you got tweeter, you got horns. Well, you got loudspeakers. He had BRs. BR stands for bass rocker. They're more of a like a, like a recent brand that came out, but they're in competition with some of the best speakers out, like EVs. EVs are orchestra or concert um like hall speakers like arena speakers ev stands for electro voice they're about one probably now they're probably like 200 each 10 inch ev speaker back in the day when i was a youngster they were 135 well 125 then they went to 135 then they went to 155 then they went to 175 then they went to 185 each now i'm really surprised that they're about 200 dollars for each e ev but ev is a super duper loud concert speaker that somewhere along the line many years ago <laughs> i think the early 90s maybe late 80s people started using them in their cars and six by nines six and a halfs and all that ain't got nothing on an ev or let me just say ain't got nothing on a voice speaker on a loudspeaker so since evs are so expensive there's a lot of other companies alternatives um bamas are expensive too b-e-y-m-a bama they make voice speakers too. But since EVs are so expensive, there's a lot of other alternatives like BR, which is bass rocker that makes voice speakers. There is Eminence. There's um, PRV. There's PVS. There's 
um, Selenium, there's Menace Audio. All these brands that I'm naming also make a voice speaker alternative, which is a loudspeaker, which does what? It just projects voice. In a car system, what you wanna do is you wanna have your speakers doing separate jobs. You don't wanna have one speaker doing everything. You don't wanna have one speaker doing the bass, doing the voice, doing the mids, doing the tweets, doing the highs, doing the lows. They make speakers for that. They're called door speakers, co co coaxial, you know, co or coaxial, however you wanna pronounce it. Those speakers, they're like five-way speakers or three-way or whatever. They come with like the tweeter built in and all that stuff. They do a little bit of mid, they do a little bit of high and all that, but at high values, they tend to sound distorted and they're not really for like long range. But the loudspeakers, they're like DJ speakers. They're super loud, super loud. There's a couple other brands like O2 that I, that I missed, Oxygen, and probably three or four more voice speaker brands that I miss. Um, Focal, I know Rainbow makes some pretty good <laughs> co coaxial speakers or coaxial, whatever you call it. Um, but anyway, yo, check out what they painted on the window. They painted, yo, there's somebody in there. I ain't even gonna point at it. <laughs> They painted a wiener on the window. <laughs> they created the thing is somebody's in there and they driving around with that. Like, why not just get out and wipe it off? Yo, I don't know if they noticed it yet. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that's a little schooling on music system. So if you want to get a good sounding music system, get some loudspeakers, some voice speakers that only do voice. Get some good subs that only do bass. Get some good mids that only put out the mid range. Get some good tweeters that only do the tss, 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 cause that's all tweeters do. Get some good horns if, if you're into horns. I don't really use horns, but if you like the projection, horns pr project a lot and so on, you know? You could use six by nines and all them other ones if you're not into competition or like hearing it at like long range. Yeah, Camp Campagnola Funeral Home. That has been there for a while. I've been to many funerals in that location. Um, I got my smoothie spot right up the block. Actually, like in three blocks, it's actually Roosevelt Boulevard and Fish Street. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you down here because we're gonna stay in the, the Hunting Park neighborhood. Um, you know, we walk up a little bit more and then we're gonna leave the Hunting Park neighborhood. So just keep going up this way. We'll go to like by Porky's Point and all of that. So y'all can see what Porky's Point look like. It's a popular little Spanish restaurant spot that people come to here in Philly sell rice beans, patelillos. I think they sell acapulquias, they sell tortones, they sell you know chicken and all that stuff. All the, all the foods that you guys might like, they, they sell them there. Yeah, it's that warm weather. I'm telling you, everybody provoking me to go wash my vehicle. <laughs> go wash it, shine it up with some arm oil, and then boom, go drive through a pothole where they just did construction and ruined my tires. <laughs> Oh, that's disturbing. I hate that. We just passed St. Luke Street and this is St. Paul Street. We got Aspida right there. Aspida is like, a, they provide services. I think they got like college programs and all that stuff. Got a couple businesses across the street. La Muchacho, Barbershop, Serrano and Indio, Massage Therapy, Linear, El Fogon Restaurant. Shaking Crab. Shaking Crab. Indio's Auto Repair. We got the Career Link and Esperanza building across the street. I believe Esperanza got a college too. I think you could take like college classes there. Nueva Esperanza, I believe that is. Um, new experience they got a career link center there career link is basically an office that helps you know people get a job so if you're in that Philadelphia area you just moved in you happen to move to this area you just want to try to utilize the services go to career link they usually got a job wall with a bunch of jobs in the area and if you qualify you know you can apply if you don't have a resume career link use ooh, excuse me Career Link usually has a staff that will help you organize your resume and print it out for you. 
it's like a job center almost. And I believe if you're on welfare or something of that nature, and you got to be in the work program, like a work ready program, if you're receiving public assistance, many people don't know that. People think that some people get welfare. Oh wow, look at this old school Toyota. This is beautiful. Beautiful. Ah, oh, look at that Toyota. Celica. Nice. This is this is nice. This is fly right here. It's all original. And it got like like eight beamers. I mean BRs. Remember I was just talking about the BRs? And the back, look at. You got a loud system in the back. Yeah, I was just talking about that, right? Literally just talking talking about that. It's John nice. Yeah, so anyway, a lot of people think that people get welfare in Philly and just sit at home. Now, although that may be the case for some people, <laughs> it's not all people. It depends, I guess. I don't know. Like, I'm not on welfare, so I can't tell you exactly. But I do know that I worked in social services for probably nine plus years, give or take, roughly. And you have to, like... Um, if you receive income, I think you got to go to this work ready program where you go to one of those centers, like the, like the career link center. They make you go there. You got to work like a certain amount of hours every day. You got to clock in, you got to clock out because you're receiving assistance. And they're also keeping tabs on you, making sure you're actually looking for work. So they're promoting you to get a job. You know, they're promoting you to, you know, go out there every day, make an effort, get a job. Sometimes they put you in like a childcare center. Sometimes they put you in a nonprofit organization. They'll place you at different sites across the city that are approved. And, you know, hopefully in three to six months to a year, you get a job where you don't need welfare no more. And then they wean you off of it. All right, we got some bikes here. Willie, 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 y'all. Willie, 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 Willie. Oh, we got Butchie. We got on um, the pink bikes, my young boy Butchie. Mm -hmm. She was on a pink bike. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We got some action. Yeah, they pointed out at the camera, and I was over here with my hand waving them up, like, bring it up, pop it up, pop it up. All I had to do was give them the signal. All I had to do, like, if y'all got an actual shot of me, you would have saw my hand, like, real low key with my hand up. I was like, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And they popped it up, and they gave me a little bit of action, you know? Most people in Philly, like, if you see them on a the bike, they're more than happy to Willie for you. <laughs> They're more than happy to Willie for you. Yeah, so we passing the barber shop, Los Brothers Barber Shop. So right now we walking down Fifth Street. This is Fifth Street. I usually come up here a lot when I go to like you know past like Champ Lots or like Roosevelt Boulevard and all that for like food. Cause I got a couple spots over here. Um. But if you like in the city during the Puerto Rican parade, this is also one of the popping spots where cars drive through, people act wild. Uh, I just stopped because I thought I saw something muffler. That's one thing. I like Hondas, I don't like loud mufflers. There's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference. And although I know Hondas have, I mean, mufflers have a purpose, mufflers are supposed to allow the engine to ventilate, to get more air and all that stuff, blow more exhaust. And therefore, giving you more power. Theoretically, you're supposed to give you more, more like horsepower. Um, but I don't really like it. I, I prefer to have like a like a sleeper, like all motor. You know, it, you know, it could be a five, six, seven hundred horsepower car, but have a nice quiet mo muffler on it, so all you hear is the sound from the engine, and maybe a turbo if you want. But then again, they're like tuned. But how's your vehicle going to breathe? You need to open up that pipe, you know. Three inches, <laughs> three inches of exhaust. Remove the catalytic, buddy. Go straight pipe. Go open headers. Nah, I mean, I guess for like a drag car, that's cool. You take it to Echo, New Jersey. You take it to the drag raceway. You leave it open headers. That's cool. But in the city, ah, not a big fan of it. All right, we got Boost Mobile across the street. We got Rose Dry Cleaners. Passing the dental business. We got Calle Bar. Got a Spanish restaurant right here called Maria Restaurant. Come 
Latinas, Latinas, Latin food. And Latinas means, I guess, females, because as, or uh, Latina is female. Latino is for male. We got Cousins Supermarket across the street. It's like a local supermarket where a lot of people utilize. As you can see, the Cousins Supermarket parking lot is packed. Hold on. Free FedEx commercial. Check it out. Look it. The supermarket is packed. You guys were wondering where everybody's at. They over here getting compra. <laughs> they over here getting groceries. Yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, it's crazy because you seen Butchie. Butchie was on the pink bike. He was on the pink dirt bike. I saw Butchie before he was on dirt bike. Butchie was a young boy. I got him on one of my videos. Hold on, another car. We had another system and it's kind of hard for me to be talking all over these systems. So Butchie, right now he's a young adult. Butchie probably, he, he looked like he's like 18, 19 now. But, uh-oh, another system. A Toyota Corolla wagon. <laughs> so anyway, I knew Butchie. He's on one of my videos. He's on my One Way Drew um, bike life video. It's called Bike Life One Way Drew. And that's on my page. You just filter to most popular and scroll down. Butchie was on that video with pedal bikes. And he was young. And he was like probably 14, maybe 13, 14, 15. That was a couple years ago. Now, he moved it up to dirt bikes. Another bike. What we got here? We got two two dirt bikes. It looked like one was a four. No, both of them was four four strokes. So yeah, it goes to show you how sometimes they'll start off on like a pedal bike, and then they'll end up moving up to a dirt bike or a street bike, a supermoto, and all that. We got KFC right here. Dunkin' Donuts. Taco Bell. That building right here was closed for many years. I believe that was a school. That was a school before. I think the building was even a lot larger and they, and, and, and they made it a little thinner. But it was abandoned for many years. And they recently just rehabilitated the building and look at it, they made it look pretty. They made it look beautiful. Um, they did a new in, inside out. They used the same shell. They made a Citizens Bank and a few other businesses here. I actually got family that owns this this building here. He owns a couple buildings in Philly. He owns that one. He owns this one. And he rents them out. Shout out to my homie Peanuts. This is Peanuts Block. My homie Peanut. He got the police that just drove by. Yeah, this is called the Roberto Clemente Homes. So I guess they made it into like, maybe like affordable homes. Maybe like senior housing. But as you can see, they also had like a business on the first floor. So, yeah, I mean, if we would have still been zigzagging through the neighborhoods, there have been a lot of stuff that we would have still haven't been able to see. So, I figured, you know, cut through some of the blocks. We didn't go through each and every single block, but I do got tours covering. Go ahead, go ahead. There's bikes everywhere, as y'all can see, for the most part. A little, little another supermoto. Now, for those y'all who don't know what a supermoto is, that was a supermoto. And I'll tell you right after this commercial break. So, for those of the viewers that don't know what a supermoto is, a supermoto looks just like a dirt bike, but it's not a dirt bike. It's street legal. It has street legal tires, headlights, taillights. It's penned out approved. It got a quieter muffler. It looks just like a dirt bike. But it's not. And all you got to do is get your motorcycle permit and or license. Your learner's permit or your license. We're at Fifth and Pike. Fifth and Pike still in the hunt, Hunting Park neighborhood. Um, all you got to do is get your learner's permit and get your license. And you can ride a supermoto. And a supermoto looks just like a dirt bike. They got like the DRZ 400 SM. They got like the um, WR conversion. You can even convert a 450, you know, CR 450 and turn it into a supermoto. Um, but you got to get it, you know, approved by PennDOT, by the DMV. And, you know, you, you got to put headlights and everything on it. And you, and you get them in, inspected. You put insurance on them. Insurance annually for a supermoto is like 110 bucks a year. Yeah. Because I know insurance for my little scooter, 
for my meat meat that's porky's point that's a little spot where everybody goes to for food that's what i was talking about earlier the spanish restaurant i'm gonna make this left here because i don't want to go down one of the back blocks uh Por porky's point is popular though like if you come there in the summer you'll see that thing packed all spanish food but um so i know the insurance for my scooter is like like a like 106 dollars for the year 106 bucks for the year gasoline for the scooter is like three dollars a gas tank and it takes me all around the city and some for over three plus hours of steady riding you know a lot of people say why you ride a meet me but why you ride the scooter bro i ride it because it's cheaper insurance than a car <laughs> like i could pay for insurance i could pay registration for two years registration for the scooter is like 14 bucks a year so i could pay for two years pay 22 bucks and have my scooter registered for two years straight Versus a car, I gotta spend like what fifty-seven bucks to register a car. I mean, to to renew the registration. That piece right there on the left-hand side, that's Bark B A R K. That's a Philadelphia graffiti artist. He's, I think I talked to you guys about him in a couple other videos. I'll tell you how he asks for permission. And he gets legal permission to paint out here in the daytime, and he and he got a lot of murals in Philly that are all in the daytime. <clears throat> all right, we're going down the thirty-eight hundred block of Lawrence. Yeah, but Supermoto is where it's at. If you want to be on something that's like a dirt bike, but you ain't got to worry about the police chasing you. Yeah. That's actually what I'm on now. I'm on Supermoto life. I've had my fair share of dirt bikes. But two things. Getting chased, for me personally, is not fun. And losing a bike isn't fun because I lost a bike to the law before. And they impounded it and... They auctioned it off. Um, and also, the noise. I think I'm to the point in my life where, like, I'm trying to minimize the noise. It becomes, like, a nuisance, you know? I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like a classic vehicle. Got a nice little, little Mustang. Yeah, that's cool. Nice little Mustang. Needs a little TLC, but it's a classic. Could bring that right back to life. Yeah, so I'm to the point in my life where it's crazy because, you know, like I was telling you earlier, like my EF, it, you know, I got music in it too. So I'll be one of the ones making noise when I'm driving around playing the music. But make note, I don't drive that every day. I drive that maybe, if I'm lucky, a handful of times in the summer. If it's a good summer, I might ride it 12 times in the summer and a three and a half month summer during the warm season. There's been some years where I ain't bring it out in two, three years straight. Or there's been some years where I rode it maybe two, three times for the summer, and that's it. That car, I only put insurance on it for like a month or two when it's the warm season. And then when I'm done using it and I'm done with my fun and my joy, I take off the insurance and park it back up. Because there's no point in paying insurance for a vehicle that you're not driving daily. And I don't really want to make noise daily. I don't care to play loud music daily. We're passing the 400 block of Butler. Yeah, I don't really care to play loud music during... You know the days anymore plus you go deaf like i've been having hearing loss problems for the last i know zebo that's zebo right there um shout out to zebo styles c styles soak gmez gm easy ty lace yeah philly's graph life is absolutely real people over here take it serious Kyrie. It's a lot more hands all throughout here. This says Puerto Rico right here. We're passing Cary Street. 400 block of Cary. 400 block of Cary. Yeah, but it says Puerto Rico. You see you got the Puerto Rico flag. Moon, Boulder. Shout out to Boulder, Raw. Philadelphia rapper and graph artist. Boulder. <laughs> Muggsy. Yeah, little back blocks like these. And I remember I told you that Bark does his legal. These straights and, you know, throw ups and burners. I know Reeve, my young boy Reeve, R E A V E. And what's that, Mero? I thought it was going to be Mecro. Um, Reeve, and a lot of these right here are done illegally. 
We're passing 400 block of Airdrie Street or Airdrie SR. Yeah, so a lot of these, they're done without permission. So you come here at nighttime and you hit it up. Look, that's why they look some more rushed and fast paced. That's a throw up. Somebody crossed this dude out. It's messed up. It's messed up. Snag. They crossed him out. He writes for WCS Whip City Specialists. Whip City Specialists. They got. Me on your video, gang. What's up? What's... <laughs> Good looking, bro. All right, bro, bro. Yeah. So he wanted to be shouted out. Huh? Shout yourself out, bro, bro. <laughs> He threw up some, some signs and whatnot. I should have told him to put his Instagram in and everything. You know what I mean? Put his Instagram. Wonder if we can get to 2nd Street from over here. I think not. That's all closed off over there. Yeah, that's eerie. It's all closed off. Snipe, ICP, Dask, KMD, Wilito. Yeah, a lot of other ones. XA. Wait, who? <laughs> yeah, I like that. <sighs> yeah, y'all, so. That's a little bit of like the Philadelphia underground urban culture. You know, I talked to y'all a little bit about bike life. Talked to y'all very briefly about handball. Talked to y'all about the music audio culture here. I talked to y'all very briefly about the car culture. I believe I talked to y'all briefly about like the graffiti culture. Um, y'all seen a little bit of the corner life, you know, a couple homies hanging out on the corner. For the most part, they could tell if you're from around here or if you're not from around here. And you know, I just walk through. I walk through just chilling. I mean, I don't, you know, when you walk through these hoods, you don't walk through to start problems. You walk through, you know, to show love and people want to socialize. I socialize people like him. How he said, shout me out, gang. In order to shout you out, I gotta know your name. But I should have told him, yo, what's your name? But I thought that he was gonna say it. I pointed it to him and he just threw up. <laughs> he threw up some hands, some hand signs and whatnot. But yeah, so you see, for the most part, the ambience isn't so bad. A lot of people prejudge based on like certain videos they might see in Philadelphia. They might see Kensington and think the whole entire Philly looks like Kensington. Or they might see Badlands, like this area. They might think the whole entire Philly looks like this area. No, it doesn't. This is just one of the areas that, you know, happen to look like this. Um, but even though it looks rough, there's a lot of great working class people here. There's a lot of creativity here. There's a lot of talent here. We're on Lawrence and Venango. Lawrence and Venango. There's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of working families. There's a lot of, you know, colleges. There's a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs. There's a lot of greatness that goes on in Philly that comes from Philly. You know, I myself, I'm born and raised in Philly. Northside, this, these, these are the streets that I walked when I was a kid, you know? Drove through, throughout my younger years. My pop brought me through when I was a little pipsqueak, when I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. These are the streets that I, he was driving through when I was in his car with his system. You know, and I was his passenger. He used to play the music and bump the system. This is the neighborhood that I was driving in with him, you know? So that's why I feel so comfortable. Now, don't get it twisted. Anything can happen to anybody in this neighborhood. No one's invincible. No one's invincible. I don't care who you are, ain't no one invincible. But I walk around with good faith, with good spirit, with positive energy. And I keep my head held high and respect everybody that's around me, you know? Try to respect pe people. You know, if you want respect, you gotta give respect. We're about to hit Fifth Street again. We're right around the corner from Gary Michael Heidnick's house. If you are not subscribed, turn on your notification bell and set notifications to all notifications so you can see when the 360 tour drop, when I go through Gary Heidnick's block and 360. So y'all can see and hear a little bit about him briefly. Yeah, 
Yeah, he was doing an Amazon delivery. We're about to, we're on 5th Street, right? We just passed 5th and Sedgley. That restaurant right there, I'll check this out. More graph. That restaurant right there is called El Principe. They got two of them to my knowledge. One on front in Lehigh and this one. And they make really good rice, red rice. They make pretty good red rice. I make way better red rice to be completely honest. My red rice is popping. Spicy, flavorful. They said, too, how could rice be spicy? Well, maybe I exaggerated on the spicy, but it got a kick, it got flavor. You taste the garlic, you taste the pepper, you taste the salt, you taste the seasoning, colorful. Um, you know, man, it, it just made me want to go make some red rice. Some people call it orange rice, yellow rice. I call it red rice, just cause I want to call it red rice. <laughs> but um, yeah, they made good white rice and beans and they make some good totones. You know what? You know what makes their totones good? Their totones are good because they got some garlic. They, they put like real garlic, like crushed. They actually like a nice garlic sauce. A really good garlic sauce. It tastes so good and you dip the totones in it. Oh man, I want some. <laughs> they make salads that I eat. I love their salads. Salads are awesome. They be having beets, radish. Lettuce, onions, tomatoes, um, cucumbers. Damn, I'm making myself hungry and I just burn a whole 10 bajillion ca calories. <laughs> Yo, is this open? Can we explore this right now? This is a banner factory. This is open, I'm going in it. No, oh man. I would love to go in this joint right now. It's an abandoned factory. Let me see if there's an entrance. Is there an entrance? Nah, they sealed up the entrance. Ha, <laughs> not all the went in it. Showed y'all what it looked like. Yeah, this is a big factory. This is abandoned. This will end up getting bought out soon. Like if you're a millionaire and you got money, this is definitely a nice investment property. <laughs> you know, it's definitely a nice building. I, this right here, please somebody buy it for me and mail it to me. Come on, some multi bajillionaire from Dubai, whoever's watching. Look at Sonic. Sonic. Crisis. Whoever is watching, right? That's a bajillionaire that just has a bunch of petty cash to spend. That feels like donating to some homeless bum in Philly. That's me. <laughs> Buy me this building, y'all. I'll be your friend forever and ever and ever. Come on, come on, y'all. Just mail it to me. Buy it and then mail it to, it to me. Right? <laughs> I'm like, Tune, but why are we gonna mail you a building? Nah, this is this is nice. This is a nice chunk of property. A nice chunk of real estate right here. Oh, I would love to have that. One day, one day. Meanwhile, I can have this bed for absolutely free at zero cost. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's a nice building, man. They had forklift trucks, material handling, pilot equipment, pilot jacks. And all. Hell yeah, son. So we're walking through Fifth and Ontario. Fifth and Ontario, and this is this is actually. Hold on, let me wait till the music. Yeah, I was about to say because. I can't like speak all over music. The music was kind of loud. Again, there goes those voice speakers. The voice speakers be loud. And it may not sound loud like on the video. If you're watching from, from your cell phone and you don't got headphones on, it might not sound loud, loud. But like, if you hear and you in person, it sound loud, 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 loud. There you go, the music just, just got turn, turned back on. Yeah, so, this is like one of the most popping strips. You know, definitely a popping strip in Philly. Um, I'll probably end up doing like a like like a tour here soon with the homie Ainge Chavo. I'm you know waiting on his go, but this is a neighborhood that he you know grew up in a little bit. I still want to make sure because he grew up in this neighborhood and he also grew up in another neighborhood. He mingled between both neighborhoods, so I want to make sure that. He is cool with it. Cause he, he is down. He already told me that he's down, but I want to figure out what neighborhood that he want to do. 
and then we'll do like a walkthrough. We'll do a detailed walkthrough with Ainge and, you know, Ainge Travel. He's a YouTuber. I think right now he changed his YouTube name to Money, Money Ainge. I think that's his, that's his YouTube name now, Money Ainge. And yeah, probably do a walkthrough with him here, a little hour tour so he could talk about some stories, talk about memories on the block. So make sure to subscribe, turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out. I know a lot of people have been telling me that they've been getting notified late. Love that OM Doro, bro. Yeah, um, the park is popping. The park is lit. Romonita Negro Rivera Park. I always just called this uh, Fifth and Allegheny Playground. That's what I used to call it. <laughs> I ain't never called it Romanita, but some people probably still call it that, but I don't call it that. I call it Fifth and Allegheny Playground. I used to play handball inside this um, yard over here on the left. But yeah, y'all, so I think this is gonna conclude my short little tour of the Hunting Park neighborhood. We actually exited the Hunting Park neighborhood, but it's cool. You know, just wanted to show y'all a little bit of the area, mix it up a little bit. We didn't follow no one rule. We were in like a zigzag pattern in the beginning, but I realized it occurred to me that zigzagging on foot is not that efficient and we're not gonna see that much stuff. So I cut through traffic a little bit, showed y'all some of the back blocks. We talked about a variety of stuff. I wanna say thank you for your attention retention you heard me say retention and then thank you for your attention i appreciate your time i appreciate your support your courtesy um thank you for your uplifting words please donate a thumbs up a thumbs up is an awesome donation next donate a comment when the live stream finish comment in the comment section share your thoughts share your memories share your stories and show love show love and show support you know what i mean I'll greatly appreciate it. Lastly, if you can, share this video amongst a friend, a family member. You can share it on like a social network. You can share it via text. Copy the link and share it. Send it to somebody text, you know? Send it to somebody via text. Say, yo, check out this video. And if they watch it, they watch it. If they don't watch it, at least you tried. It's the thought that counts, all right, y'all? With that being said, thank you for your time. It's your homeboy, Mr. Toon, Toon Dollars, Toon Ski, Toonism, Toon One, Super Toon, Bad Toon, Toonage, Toony Califragilistic, Expialidocious, and I'm tuning out.